The Tiger Moth was the absolute standard, what they called elementary flight trainer before and during and for some little period after World War II for all the Commonwealth nations. In England, they built probably a little over 7,000, maybe uh, wow. 7,500 in their production run. They also built about eight or 900, I think, in Canada. And the only difference, the Canadians had a sliding canopy similar to a T6, but it was pretty flimsy, but it was still a canopy and they had a muff heater on the exhaust so they could fly in winter conditions. And England had what they called the Empire Flight Training Program or whatever they sent, because England itself was under constant bombardment, they were sending pilots to Canada, to Rhodesia, South Africa to get trained, elementary training. Um, in the original form, no brakes, no tail wheel, the tail skid, but it wasn't a skid like World War I fighters. It had a big um, spoon on it, so it would slide over the grass without digging in. Um, and in England, prior to the Yankees coming over and building runways, all the airports were, as we call them, aerodromes. They were just big square fields. Um, and so you taxied out, even without brakes, you could steer it a little bit. There's a little interconnection between the rudder and the tail wheel. So you could get a little steering. Um, but once you lined up into the, you always lined up into the wind and landed into the wind and then it was just a taxi back. And when you got back to the hard, to the hard stand, to the parking spot, you had to have a guy on a wing or whatever hold the wing while you bursted it into a parking position because you couldn't turn very tight at all. Um, what else was I going with that? So they even used it for some uh, instrument flight training, basic instruments, by putting a hood over the rear cockpit, which is where the student pilot would sit, the instructor pilot sat in the front. You have to solo it from the rear, so that's why they set it up that way. Um, they even did night flying, although they had no landing lights, and again, wartime conditions. The duty officer would lay out a flare path on the square field that they were going to land on and they would get in the circuit and fly around and around and get their takeoffs and landings at night um, again without any landing lights but just lining up on the flare path um, and they could move the flare path according to the wind and so they would do that but if they got a um, alert that Germans and they did come at night often then some airmen would run out there and they would put out all the flares and so I asked a couple of guys, I've talked to quite a number that have flown these during the war, well, what did you do then? He said, well, we flew around until I ran out of gas and, <laughs> and parked. And he said, and, and then we went over to this line and we got five more student pilots and we went over to this line and we got five more training airplanes and we started all over again. Um, oh gosh. Kind of a normal thing. Every year in England they have a big fly-in for Tiger Moss and all the Haviland models that a place called Woburn Abbey. It's uh, the country estate of a titled English family who were active themselves in aviation. Uh, the Duchess of, I think what she was Duchess of, was very famous for flying a gypsy moth during uh, flooding conditions in some parts of England and doing rescue work and that sort of thing. Um, so again, they just have a long grass area in front of the manor house and that's plenty enough yeah. for these. You don't really need much. <laughs> And they get as many as uh, 80 or 85 Tiger Moths and maybe six or eight Gypsy Moths. Some of the twin engine Dragon Repeats and that sort of thing. But and I've been over there for a number of those. I lived in England for a while.